Hey guys, Kev here, and I wanted to do a rapid review sesh. So I have a few knives here, a couple that were loaned in, and we'll kind of just run down the line. So uh, first one is the James brand Whalen. So I actually put this up for sale, and it just sold. Um, so this is going to be sent off to my buddy Tom. Shout out to him. Um, but I wanted to do a quick overview. I don't think I did one. And uh, it's pretty cool, 189 bucks, S35, VN steel. You have that machine satin on there. You have titanium frame with these sort of inlays of black uh, micarta. I haven't really seen micarta like this, it's kind of cool. It's got an interesting tinge to it, like almost reddish. It's not, but um, I don't know, it's just interesting. You have this uh, very big lanyard hole, which is very James brand style. Um, you have zero hardware showing anywhere. You do have a blacked out spring, which is kind of nice. It goes with the vibe. Um, you are flush. Let's just check. You are flush. Yep. Flush. Yep. Looks like we're flush in all three positions. Maybe just barely proud on the closed position there. Yeah. Um, but it's done very well, I would say, for 189 bucks. Um, it has this nail nick that that's the biggest issue I have with it is it's a little too modern for me, even though it has a lot of really cool uh, traditional takes, um, like the bolster and the Barlow pattern and everything. But this nail nick is very just, I don't know, it kind of kills it for me. Um, and then you have the lanyard hole that's huge and... I don't know. So those two things just kind of don't do it for me, but I do really like it. It's a flat grind, but it's very sharp. It's slicey. I've used it a little bit on cardboard, paper, that kind of stuff. It did not really, you know, it's a slip joint. So it's there to come out, make a quick cut and, and go back uh, in your pocket. And um, it did excellent at that. The walk and talk is very good. I'd say I'd put it around a six or seven probably closer to six and a half i'll call it um so you got a good enough amount of pressure here that you're not going to accidentally just close it on yourself but you can um close it one hand it's not you know the hardest thing in the world but it feels good it's got a nice jump to it once it broke in i don't know if you guys maybe saw the unboxing or whatever and at first when it jumped to half stop it would kind of like have a little left over that i have to like push to seat it all the way to half. That doesn't happen anymore. Now it's broken in, it just jumps right to half, and then it, it's a solid close. It's not like, there's none of that happening anymore. And you can see it pops down. So slip joints definitely break in. I put a little bit of KPL on the um, tang points, which is good. It's dead nut centered. Um, it kind of has everything you want in a modern, uh, traditional slip joint. Um, it's very comfortable in hand, very neutral, but everything's rounded nicely. It just feels good in the hand. Um, of course, you're probably going to hold it back here or like this or in a pinch grip slicing like that. Um, so overall, I got to give them high marks on this. I think for the price point and the materials, you're really doing a, um, a good job. So that is where I'm at with this. I enjoy it quite a bit. And um, I did sell it, obviously, but I think it's because I'm spoiled by Jack Wolf knives. Now, this is half the price, basically. Uh, it's $189, but so it's 100 bucks less, essentially, not half the price. But um, so for that 100 bucks, you're getting crazy fit and finish. M390 with a belt satin, full hollow grind. So you're getting a little bit there, maybe fat carbon. So I would definitely pay that to get what you get with a. Um, Jack Wolf, for example, I'll grab a laid back jack here, which is also a Warney style blade. There's a size comparison, if you will, too. Um, I'll grab the Midnight so you can see, because the blade shape is more Warney, but it's kind of in between, I guess. And there you go. Um, it's definitely closer to the Midnight in size. But again, like the differences you're going to see here are this beautiful belt satin, really crisp lines, fat carbon fiber, right? Um, the walk and talk is just 
very very crisp and jumpy and it's definitely stronger on the jack wolves which is my preference may not be yours um, but you just have a little more pop on those in my opinion than you do on this but it's still really good so uh, yeah i recommend it uh one thing is it came with this little nick on the spine it's hard to show you see that a little nick on the spine not a big deal i did disclose it obviously when i sold it and i sold this for 150 so um yeah um i think it came like that though and it has a stop pin so that's why again acoustically it's not as good as the jack wolf but it still sounds really good I think it's a really solid knife, and um, they did a great job here, so I want to give them credit for that. That's the James brand Waylon. So then, since we're talking about slip joints, let's talk about the Lion Steel Thrill. Now, this one was loaned in by Puerto Rican with a Knife. Uh, shout out to him. If you are um, just wanting to check out some cool knives and a dude's honest take on it, check his stuff out. Now, he's definitely not G-rated, so... Don't watch his stuff with your kids. But if you're watching my stuff, you're probably sort of used to that. Uh, but I, I caught myself today. I was I was uh, giving my kid a bath, and I checked my Instagram, and he popped up. And he always starts his um, pocket dumps with, it's whatever day. And he's like, it's Saturday, fuckers. And I was like, oh, shit. And then I close it, and then I open Instagram again, and then it, it popped up again and started talking. He said the same thing. I was like, damn it. Um, I didn't want my kid to hear it, obviously, but uh, she's a, a bit young for it to matter, but I just thought it was funny. Let me just see. Is this a T8? Yeah. Can I tighten that? Because I don't know if you saw right there when I did this. It kind of... See how it wants to swing out like that? But I don't think you can tighten that out. Yeah. Um, oh, while we're here, I actually got a discount code for Get Good Screw. So if you want one of their drivers, uh, if you've been looking to get one, but they're just a bit pricey, um, you can get 10% off with Lefty 10. I don't get anything, but I mean, they've hooked me up with drivers and stuff, um, you know, and I love their product, so I'm happy to promote it. And um, if it saves you guys 10%, that's a good uh, it's a good bit on something that costs as much as these do. So check them out. Get good screwdrivers. Lefty 10 over there. It'll be in the description from now on as well. But this is the Lion Steel Thrill. And I've always wanted to check one of these out. And um, I'm glad I finally did. I'm glad I didn't pay for it. But I also really like it. So it's a very interesting knife in terms of that it's kind of a conundrum for me now first it's a little too modern again like the Wayland, just a little too modern um if i'm gonna go slip joint i want it to be a little more traditional um now that being said my own design with uh devo that is a urban edc knife is not super traditional either but it, i don't know i feel like it has that has those roots um where this is kind of like very far modern. And then the way they did the nail nick and the hole and everything kind of makes this really modern. Where this still has that feel of a traditional, I think. Um, but then you have that choil, you know, with the stop pin and, um, you know, the full tie construction. But I don't know. I just think it still has that vibe a little bit. Especially the Sagaha ones. But anyway... Um, so yeah, it's very modern. It's M390, made in Italy. These, I believe, are around 120 bucks um, if they're still available. And this is the aluminum version. They do have or did have a titanium version. Um, those were like 200 bucks or so. I don't know if there's sales now or whatever. But the first thing I've noticed about this since getting it is the action. The walk and talk is very addicting. And it's actually very good. Um, it's my issue with it is the spring tension so the walk and the talk is fantastic but the spring tension is way too low i mean you can see here i can just no problem it's i mean it jumps from close or open to half with barely any resistance at all so i mean it's like a i mean it might be a four 
might be a four. I mean, it's really light. And from here to half is the same, just very light. And I hate that. On a slip joint, I do not want a light spring because I'm going to be using the knife. And in this case, this is one of those where people worry about slip joints because they don't lock. But if you take a knife like the Barley, Urban EDC Barley, designed by Devo Knives, this has a, uh, a choil, so it basically makes it impossible to close on yourself. But it also has a decent spring. We are going to beef this up in production. So right now it's probably, I mean, a six is like probably as high as I would take this one. Um, so I'm hoping it'll end up being around a seven in production. But with that six, you have some pressure there that you're not just like instantly breaking through. You see how I have to actually like mean I have to mean to do it to close it where this I can just I mean I'm barely trying there and it just pops so if I try that on this one it pushes back real easy I mean it, it's got enough spring tension to be um, not so dangerous where this is just like boom I mean so if you make a mistake Right, If you make a mistake going through a cut and accidentally come out of the cut, before you know it, this thing's going to be down on you. Um, so that in itself is an issue for me um, because these modern traditionals, we want to get people back into slip joints. So by doing this, you're making it to where they're going to be more likely to walk away from slip joints because you're making it dangerous, you know? Um, so that's the biggest takeaway from this knife. Um, if you take nothing else away, take that away. Now, it's possible that they vary because in Italy, their production knives do tend to vary greatly um, in terms of QC, detents, all that centering, all that stuff. So it's possible this one's just really light and most of them are stronger. But I got to go off of what I have. Um, so walk and talk. Other than the spring, though, very crisp the um the angles they have on the um tang corners are really good i mean watch it jump so it does jump it has that walking has what you want it just needs to have a stronger spring i mean i really enjoy it it's addicting um the spring is flush on open it is flush on half and it is flush on close one of the coolest things about this knife is it is an integral so this is actually a aluminum frame and it's one chunk one billet of aluminum that they've cut out to uh, take the blade in and then they've also added a hardened steel sort of interface but the spring is actually aluminum it's cut out of that frame and that's probably why it's probably it's probably why it's a little bit weak um, because they're using that tension. So I wonder if the titania ones maybe could have a stronger a stronger spring because um, it's more flexible and you could probably get a little more spring on it. So that would be an interesting um, comparison would be to get one in titanium but i just don't want to spend 200 bucks to find out you know what i mean but um i find this very unique and very cool that it is uh, cut out of one piece of aluminum um so that is a unique feature of this knife you can see there's a lot of milling that's cool the clip is another unique feature it has the hidden clip function this is really cool i think they brought this out on a different model the rock maybe are okay i think it's called um but then they put it on this knife, which ugh, it's so perfect if you think about it on a slip joint. Because for me, I like having a slip. Um, if I'm going to have a slip joint, I want to have a slip. It just, to me, feels right. It's how I like to carry them. So I could just carry this like any other slip joint. Don't have to worry about it. Don't even care about the hidden clip. But if you're somebody who likes to carry with a clip, boom, it pops out like that. So it's not getting in the way for anybody right? But it is there convenience wise. And it's easy to learn how to use. You just kind of grab it like this. And then when you get to your pocket, you push the knife, you start pushing the knife in and you kind of put a little pressure this way and it pops that piece up and then it'll catch on your jeans and pull it in. So you don't just try to like pop it up like this. You'll see how it just goes down now. You got to pop it back kind of. 
So if you're naturally sliding into your pocket, you push against this and it actually pops out further. So that's cool. It has this kind of cutout back here, which is interesting. I mean, it's just a very unique knife. It is cool. I like it a lot. It's dead centered. Um, so they did a lot of good here. I mean, for uh, Lion Steel, oops, for Lion Steel, I think this is really good. I just, that spring tension really hurts it for me. It's comfortable in the hand. It's got that nice, you know, Lion Steel crown spine. Um, it's definitely not like thin behind the edge, but, you know, for an EDC knife, it's acceptable. Um, and it's a cool knife. I just, it needs to have a stronger spring. So that's the Lion Steel Thrill. Um, he also sent me Puerto Rican with a knife. Um, his name's uh, Jason, by the way. Uh, he also sent me this. This is the Carter XL from the James brand. And I got to say, this is one of the better uh, crossbar lock knives I've handled um, in a while. I just like the overall build and everything. Now, I don't know the price point. Um, the original Carters were pretty pricey for what they were. It was 160 bucks, and it came with VG10 and my Carta, um, steel liners and everything. So that wasn't very cool. This is going to be VG10, and it's probably going to be around that price point. Um, so, you know, that's something to consider. Is VG10 bad? No. Um, a lot of people, um, you know... They talk about Nitro V and they talk about 154 CM and whatnot. And I feel like 14 C, I feel like VG10 is kind of in that range, um, honestly. But it just doesn't get the love that it used to get. Um, it's kind of like a steel of yesteryear for some reason. But it's still a good steel. Now, it's not a steel that's worth being on a $160 knife. This should be S35 at minimum, in my opinion. Um, it has a good edge on it. Well, I don't know. I didn't have any trouble with it. I really only uh, carried this one time, cut um, a couple boxes and opened a box, a package. And I had no trouble, but like, you know, I obviously didn't use it a lot. The, the Thrill, I think I used one time. I just wasn't comfortable using it. I didn't want to use it because of the spring. Um, so it wasn't worth it for me, so... That's why these are overviews, rapid overviews, whatever you want to call them. Um, but it's G10. It's got their crossbar lock, which I think is actually a pretty good representation of the lock. I just hate that it has these screws here. It just has a lot going on, but it does offer you a good amount of grip. Um, it does not have the best detent, but none of the crossbar locks really do. Um, it has a thumb disc that I hate. You can see me failing it. I just don't like it. Um, never have, never will like thumb discs, but it adds a pop of color and it makes the knife a little bit different. And that's why they did it. Obviously it's a cool design overall drop point blade. I really like their, uh, deep carry clip. The way they designed that actually looks good. Mounts at the rear. Um, they did a good job on that. You could use this as a lanyard post if you wanted to. You have the Chicago screws right here. So, um, overall, not a bad knife. It's just that um, it's probably overpriced. I didn't actually look the price up, but compared to the original one, it's probably, you know, 160 bucks or something like that for this. Um, unless they've, you know, changed their ways at all. But either way, it's not ultimately for me anyway, so it doesn't matter all that much. But um, that's the Carter XL. Thank you to Puerto Rican with a knife for letting me check these knives out. What else do I have? I have a Kubi here. Now, this I didn't carry or do anything with. This was sent to me by Brian over at Blue Creek Knives. So shout out to Blue Creek Knives, guys. Um, definitely check out their website. It's bluecreekknives.com slash lefty10. We'll get you 10% off your order. Um, this is a Kubi that I guess it's a newer one. I was asking Brian about it. It's the KU003, which makes me think it's older, but maybe he has them new and that's why, you know, um, but it seems like an older model. It's D2. It's got this Tanto blade, which is goofy. It has an uh, inset liner lock. So maybe it is a newer one. It just... Something about it makes it feel like an older model. Is that bad? I don't know. Not necessarily. It just feels like it's an older Kubi. It does have a newer style clip, so I could be wrong. It's, you know, uh, the clip isn't nested, but the screws are, and it is a very tight clip. That's one of the issues I always had 
with Kubi's clips, and then they updated it. So again, this makes me think it's one of the older ones, but who knows. The detent is a little lighter than I want it to be on the flipper tab, but it works. Uh, but on the whole, it's very good. It catches your finger really well, and it fires out really well. I enjoy it. I wish this sharpening choil was a man-sized finger choil. It's not, um, or I wish they would have brought it back and just done a small sharpening choil. It's very sharp. It has a compound grind, flat grind with a lot of swedging going on. I think it looks pretty cool there. Um, it's giving me like Gavco vibes, which isn't usually my aesthetic preference, but um, it's okay. It's, it's a cool knife, and if you're into it, I bet it's like 50 bucks in D2, you know? Um, so, yeah, check it out. It's the KU-003, and then uh, another one that Brian sent me is the Demco AD20.5. So this is a blacked out version of the uh, 20.5. And uh, these have always been a good knife. Um, it's basically an access lock mounted on the rear. So it has the very uh, low detent strength. Um, it's not really an access lock. It has a spring in here, but for just like, you know, explaining it sake, Basically, instead of pulling down on the side, you're pulling back here, and it operates the same way. It has a spring in there, and you overcome that spring, and it's really all that it's, you know, riding on. Um, but I will say I like it better than an axis lock because it's more natural for me to grab here with one finger and pull that down, where on an axis lock, I have to use two fingers, kind of find a spot, hold the clip, and then, you know, swing it down like that, where this, you just, you're already gripping, and you just do that, and it works really good. Um, the centering on this one looks solid. Maybe a little off to the one side, locked up tight. So I will say, I really like the blacked out look. Um, I've never been a big fan of these FRN scales with the cartoony 80-20.5 on it. Um, but I do think that the blackout looks good. I just wish they had blacked out the liners and the lock. Um, just feels a little lazy to me that they didn't do that. But these are in stock at Blue Creek Knives, which is awesome. It used to be impossible to get an 80-20.5. Now they're everywhere. They're real nice to reverse flick because you have the hole you can flick off of. And then you have the studs you can thumb flick, which is nice. So you have... Kind of the best of both worlds. That's the one thing I like about the stud hole combo. Usually I think it's a little too much, but it looks good in this case. The blade to handle ratio has always been an issue for me on this shark's foot version of the 20.5 because they used the same handle as the clip point. So it just meant they could only fit so much in. And you can see there is a lot of room after the tip but luckily this comes in a clip point version and i believe all that stuff is available at blue creek knives you can use code lefty 10 over there for 10 percent off your order and uh yeah that's the 80 20.5 i don't have a ton to say about it i've reviewed it like 80 times i think at this point because i had a bunch of them so i don't have much to say about it it's still an absolute classic of a knife very cool piece. Um, ooh, that wasn't good. What's going on there? No, it's fine. Huh. That was interesting. It just locked up for a bit, but it's good. Um, yeah, definitely check out the 8020.5. Highly recommend it if it's something you're into. You know, downsides on it, again, not being coded here. And then, you know, they use this OS 10 a um, and they were charging, I think, 150 bucks for that. That's a bit steep, but it is an OEM knife, and it is Taiwan and not China, and that's an important distinction. So, sorry. So there's the 80 20.5, the Lion Steel Thrill, the Carter XL, the Kubi 003, and the James Brand Whalen. We got five. Look at that, all blacked out. I didn't even notice that. A blacked out rapid review for you. Let me know what you guys think down below. I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.